G'day Budgies and Wedgies and welcome back to the channel. Now I'm filming this video near the end of June and this month I have purchased more rare, exotic and expensive fish than I've purchased throughout the entire year. It's been absolutely crazy and I'm going to take you through all of them plus a couple of changes that I need to go ahead and make in the fish room today. So as always let's quickly acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land and the people that are managing our land as well. But I say enough talking and let's get into the five foot aquarium and see what's here. Whoa, 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 wait. I can't go ahead and film a montage with those things floating around. We're gonna take them out first. Much better montage and as you would have seen in the five foot aquarium there are two new species the first one being a group of four zingu peacock bass and the other one being my absolutely adorable little tiger oscar now just quickly i'm sure you would have seen in the montage that there was a net with my archer fish in it and the reason they're in here is because today i noticed that there was some big splashing noises that i was hearing up near the top of the aquarium when I had a closer look, I actually saw that the peacock bass were trying to have a go at the archer fish, and this was a concern, but I don't definitely want to let that keep continuing. So I caught out all the archer fish and we're gonna transfer them into my four foot tank. Okay, either I'm gonna do this like a pro or I'm gonna get water everywhere. Yep, we're getting water everywhere. Okay, three, two, one. Okay, perfect. I love filming videos like this because I actually get stuff done around in the fish room that I would tend to sort of put off. But let's now go ahead and talk peacock bass. These are a fish that I actually used to keep about four or five years ago. And after this considerable break that I've taken, trying to find peacock bass again, especially the peacock bass that I wanted, proved to be much more difficult of a task than I originally anticipated. The reason for that is because there's been a pretty big trend of hybrid peacock bass that are available in the Australian aquarium hobby. And not that there's necessarily anything wrong with the health of these fish, I just think that the colours aren't nearly as good as purebred bass. Purebred peacock bass have all of these amazing patternings and colours that don't necessarily translate into the offspring of hybrid fish. Now the peacock bass I've got behind me, like I mentioned, are purebred zingers, and they're all about 15 centimetres minimum in length, and some of them are probably around the 20 centimetre mark. Now this was a little bit more of a problem than I originally thought as well, purely because these fish are big and they also have started to slowly show some interest in some of the smaller fish in that tank. So I did move out my barramundi, my geophagus and the archer fish like you would have seen and we'll see them in the four foot aquarium in just a sec. The second fish is actually my little Oscar and oh my god I'm kicking myself as to why I didn't go ahead and get an Oscar earlier. The amount of personality this fish puts off is something that just brings me so much joy and one of the things that I absolutely love is just greeting him in the morning, giving him a pallet or two and just training and playing with him, it's so much fun. Now what's interesting with this fish specifically is that it's actually what you would call a standard Oscar. Now all around the world the Oscar is more commonly referred to as the Tiger Oscar and that's because we've taken wild fish, line bred them to bring out more red patterning so they have that sort of stripy tiger striation look and that's generally what's most popular. However, this guy is more akin to what you would go ahead and see in the wild. The reds haven't nearly developed as much as what we commonly see, and I think that's really cool. I don't have to pay the same price that I would for a wild Oscar, and I get something that looks like that, but with all of the personality of the tiger Oscar that we know and love. All right, let's now jump over to the four foot aquarium because oh my God, there's a bunch of new stuff in that tank. <laughs> Yeah, the four foot aquarium looks totally different from the last time that you would have seen this tank. And also, I have freshwater stingrays in here. Let me throw you back to when I actually got these fish and the process that I went through of changing this aquarium and then we'll touch base again. All right, here's the game plan. I apologize if it's a little bit shaky. I'm not really one to do a lot of hands-on filming. I'm more of a tripod and sit and talk in front of the kind of guy. But here's what we've got. So I've got some towels on the floor. Got my workbench over here and I've got about four or five buckets over there to house all of the fish. Now, I want to get rid of all of the sand in this aquarium. There's probably a good 20 kilos of it and I want to take all of it out because I want to make this very low maintenance when I've got the stingrays in. 
Plus, it's a little bit abrasive and there's a chance that when the stingrays drop their barbs, it can get lodged in the sand. There's just a lot of things that I don't really want to take myself upon doing with all of this sand. And, and it's quite thick in some places as well. It's about like four or five centimeters easily. And I think I don't really need all of that sand, uh, you know, with the rays and it just doesn't really help all that much. Now, I've already made my life a little bit easier with the plants. I took them out last week and I actually potted them into these terracotta pots. There's some different sizes and different textures, so it looks kind of nice. And what I'll do is actually allocate, allocate, I'll situate them into the corners of the aquarium. So I have the bigger pots near the corners and then the smaller ones. So you've got a lot of open space out the front. Now, whilst I do that, or well, basically what I've got to do now is take all the plant pots out so it'll make it easier for me to catch all of the fish. Once the fish get caught out, I will drain the tank, take all the sand out, then we just got to put the tiles in, fill it back up, add the fish, add the plants, and we should be fine. All right, let's get into it. Yes, okay, so today is the day. The stingrays are arriving in exactly T minus five and a half hours, and I'm so incredibly excited. I need to shave, I need to get a haircut. I look like an absolute mess, but all of my focus has been towards these beautiful animals. The four foot aquarium you'll notice behind me is doing absolutely amazingly. All of the fish have settled in perfectly, the plants are thriving. I'd arguably say they're doing a lot better now in the terracotta pots than they were actually doing planted in the sand as the tank used used to look like and um, yeah just the whole aquarium as, as a whole uh, is, what am I even trying to say here now you'll notice the water is a little bit red and that's because I did run the entire aquarium through a general antibiotic I gave them a dosing of tetracycline medication which does tint the water a little bit red especially when the fish are going through a pretty stressful process like an entire aquarium change or I'm taking the sand out and there might be some biological things that are being disturbed with a well matured aquarium I just wanted to make sure they're not picking up any stress related diseases like ick and uh, making sure that I'm really keeping on top of that so the stingrays are able to go into the aquarium with no problems and the existing fish are just making sure that they're healthy and uh, you know doing as good as they can possibly be. Alright we're going handheld so about to leave to go to the airport and it's about a 22 minute drive that oh it's completely dark um is this better yeah okay cool it's about a 22 minute drive to the airport the plane landed here 25 minutes ago which gives us plenty of time to get there and wait until they actually bring the parcel off the plane to us. I just want to make sure that I'm getting there early so I can get the parcel first thing, crack it open, see how everyone's doing. And so we're just going to go to the airport now. <laughs> Should be good. Oh my god, I'm home and look, the stingrays have been acquired. Oh, I'm so, so incredibly excited. I've waited for a solid month and a half for this day to happen. There's just so much excitement in me that's just waiting to explode. But let me put you over here. You're going to be... You're on a bit of an angle, so we'll just talk like this. But the airport pickup went incredibly smooth, much better than what I was expecting. I was quite nervous because the last time that I went to the airport to pick up fish was when I got my Australian Lungfish Neo. So it's been some time, but everything went super smooth. Showed them the parcel number, they brought out the box, and I did open it there on the spot just because I wanted to make sure that the stingrays were okay and everything like that, which they were, they were moving. And the bags were surprisingly warm. It's almost about three or four degrees in Melbourne at this point and uh, the bag water was very warm, the heat pack was great, and these fish have been in transit for less than 24 hours. But the game plan now is I'm going to float them in the four foot aquarium for about 25 to 30 minutes. Once they've been temperature acclimated, it's just as simple as getting them out of the bag as soon as possible and into the four foot aquarium. I'm not gonna worry about a drip acclimation purely because there is a very high chance that the ammonia levels have built up in this bag and by introducing fresh oxygen, we're basically creating an ammonia spike in the bag because the pH increases. There's a little bit of crazy science that's involved in there, but simply we're just going to do the old plop and drop method. So we'll get to doing that now. Ah, so excited. <laughs> So 
So yeah, I now own a group of freshwater stingrays and how crazy is it to say that I have stingrays in a fish tank? This is wild and this has been something that I've dreamed for for many, many years. I always put it off just because I thought I wasn't, I guess, ready to keep them. But when I've tackled species like Australian lungfish, I thought this would be a piece of cake. Or should I say, pancake. <laughs> Now I actually have a group of five Mortora stingrays in this tank. I'm not keeping all five, I'm actually just keeping a male and female for myself. And the other three stingrays are actually going to a close friend of mine. We did go ahead and split this purchase and he'll be picking those up shortly. But in the meanwhile, I'm just making sure they're all good, happy and healthy, making sure that they're well fed. And oh my God, feeding is all these fish think about. The second I put some food in the tank, they're immediately smelling it, they're all over it and they pounce on their food. I'm sure you would have seen a bunch of different stingray feeding videos on YouTube and it's true. They see their food and they pounce on it like little cats. That's what I would, I guess, compare their behavior to. They're like little newborn kittens. They're so inquisitive about everything, anything that changes in the tank, they have to go ahead and see, make sure it's something that they can eat or not eat or whatever it might be, they wanna go ahead and investigate. But um, I'm so happy I have these fish. And these Mortoras were actually purchased more as a segue species for my dream species of freshwater ray, and that is the Black Diamond or Leopoldi Stingray. However, considering how much I love these Mortoras, I think I probably will keep them and also get a pair of Black Diamond Rays. Oh, it's just, it's an infection really. I just, oh, I love these fish so much. <laughs> So that was all of the monster fish purchases that I ended up doing this month. There were actually a couple of smaller, incredibly rare community fish that I wanted to include, but the video would just be way too long. So if you did want to see another video with all of the smaller fish, and I'm telling you, there are some really rare fish in here, make sure you let me know in the comment section down below. Also, the format of this video is very new for me, very experimental. I generally just do a sit and talk to you with some B-roll, but in this I included some vlog material, some montages, so if you did or didn't like anything, I'd highly appreciate that feedback in the comments section. And if you've watched the video up until this point, giving it a thumbs up would be incredibly helpful. And you do have the ability to subscribe as well. It's free and you can undo that subscribe at any point in time if you wanted, but it really does help the growth of this channel. But thank you so, so much for watching. All of your support is incredibly appreciated. And as always, stay happy, stay safe, stay Australian, bodgy,